university have joined OED. A very good evening to all of you, and it's a great honor and pleasure uh, to have with us uh, Dr. Shaoming Gong from China. He has the largest series and experience in microwave ablation, which we are going to discuss today. And it's my honor and pleasure to introduce him. And he is a co-founder and CMO of WOY1 Opgaini Medical Group in China. He's the head of uterine fibroid non-invasive treatment center in WOY1 Group. And he's the chair of China Medical Group Association. He was the chair of China Medical Group Association in the year 2018 to 98. And 2015 to present, he is a founder of 12 non-invasive and minimal invasive uterine fibroid centers in China, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Zhangzhou, and many other places. And he has a special interest in non-invasive and minimal invasive therapy for fibroid and adenomyosis. And he is the founder of largest organic professional website in China as well. And he was the chair of Chinese Medical Group Association. So. This is always a matter of controversy for when it comes to adenomyosis, medical versus surgical. So now we have something in between where uh, we can offer our patients a non-invasive treatment that is microwave ablation, which uh, needs little more uh, attention and more popularity among our patient population. It is still not very popular as compared to the effects, clinical effects it has shown in long term where it is being practiced widely like in China and Dr. Shaming is being doing this procedure. So we want to hear from his, from him what is his clinical experience and long term follow up such patients where they want to preserve uterus but they don't want to go for surgery for fibroids and other benign diseases like adenomyosis. So over to you Dr. Shaming and you can share your screen and we are eager to hear your experience and take away the clinic take home points and apply in our practice. Dr. Vimini, I just want to add to that as Xiaoming is starting his uh, presentation, that I had a great opportunity on the invitation of Xiaoming to visit China uh, as we were a part of uh, a very nice workshop at uh, Jiangnan University. And I had the opportunity to see firsthand at one of his centers, as you mentioned, that he has many centers across major cities of China doing microwave ablation in gynecology. And he is amongst very few gynecologists who are doing microwave ablation. Of course, he's a pioneer. And I witnessed uh, microwave ablation for fibroids and adenomyosis. And uh, I saw for myself uh, how microinvasive this technique is and how swift and fast it is. It is much faster than our conventional surgery as well. So uh, I think... Dr. Gong will have many more things to say about it. And of course, we will discuss uh, through his lecture. And after the lecture, we will have a good discussion and question answer session. Xiaoming, you may start. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for Suyash and uh, we, we, me uh, for the, uh, the invitation. Can you hear me well? Yes. Bye, Abhi. Okay, uh, so I should have started. So, uh, uh, just like uh, Suresh, uh, he introduced to me, and uh, I started uh, with the microwave uh, many years ago, uh, at, at at least uh, eight years. Uh, but before microwave, I do HIFU as well. So HIFU is uh, the first uh, ablation therapy uh, I used for my patient for the treatment for the adenomyosis and uh, uh, in fibroids. So uh, ablation therapy is uh, different with uh, our traditional laparoscopic surgery and uh, hysteroscopic surgery. Uh, as uh, as uh, you know, I did many of the laparoscopic surgery in the past and also a lot of the vaginal surgery as well. Uh, so I right now, we have this uh, traditional method, or laparoscopic surgery, or hysteroscopic surgery, or open surgery, vaginal surgery. But this, uh, we call the minimal invasive surgery. But compared to minimal invasive surgery, right now we have a super micro invasive, we call this category a super micro invasive treatment for usual fibers. So, so this uh, measures including the microwave, radio frequency, uh, using artery uh, embolization. 
Uh, but we also have some uh, non-invasive uh, treatment as like uh, HIFU and uh, uh, MI guide HIFU. Uh, so these uh, three kind of the treatments we also call the ablation therapy. It's uh, different with our uh, traditional uh, resection therapies. Uh, for, so use our traditional resection therapy, we get the spacement and uh, we can do mammectomy or hysterectomy. And we can do the laparoscopically, uh, hysteroscopically, or vaginally. But uh, with ablation therapy, we use the energy to, to destroy the tissue. So when we see it, you need to know about that if the lesion temperature rise to over 65 degree centigrade, uh, the tissue will be degenerated in one second. Right now, uh, the ablation therapy is widely used in China, like liver cancer, kidney cancer, lung cancer, and also, also like a thyroid cancer. The, the treatment of, with this kind of the ablation therapy, they totally change our module of the uh, treatment for the diseases. So I think that uh, ablation therapy is our next generation of surgery. So I use this uh, ablation therapy uh, since uh, uh, in the beginning of the HIFU I used in year 2009. So it's almost uh, uh, 15 years since I do the uh, HIFU. So with uh, fibers and adenomyosis, we right now we have some uh, uh, choose. Uh, for the this uh, ablation therapy, including uh, like HIFU, maybe uh, many of you know about HIFU now. And uh, why right now HIFU is uh, widely uh, used all over the world. But uh, this this one is a very expensive machine. I started with uh, HIFU in the past, uh, but after I have the microwave, I quit HIFU. So. Right now, uh, mainly it's uh, microwave uh, ablation therapy. Uh, but besides this uh, traditional ultrasound guide uh, high HIFU, we also have those uh, MI guide HIFU. MI guide HIFU is a very expensive machine. This is uh, right now it's uh, commercially used in the world. It's uh, called uh, Xvate. It's an Israel company. And also besides the microwave, we have the radio frequency. We can do uh, microwave and the radio frequency therapy uh, transabdominally or transvaginally, or we can do the laparoscopically or trans uh, uh, through the uterine cavity. So this is the method uh, we can do it with a different uh, routes. And also we have the, so the very traditional method and the mitral therapy. Compared to the traditional resection therapy, it has many advantages, especially it's a fast recovery, uh, minimal invasive pain, uh, minimal pain and no uh, or minimal wound, uh, very little blood loss. But also it has many uh, some disadvantages, like the uh, the uh, if you don't do pathology, you don't get uh, a pathology. Uh, like in, in the past, we do the high food, we don't get the pathology. But right now with the microwave and the radio frequency, we can get the pathology, we do the needle biopsy. And also we have a higher residual module, a residual tumor. Uh, for the ablation therapy for the myoma is different with uh, ablation therapy for uh, thyroid cancer. Like for thyroid cancer, the ablation area have to cover the whole uh, tumor zone. But for our benign disease, the most important thing is safety. So we have to leave some tissue inside the inside the tumor. So it has a uh, residual tumor. It also has a higher infection rate compared to resection uh, uh, therapy. So it also has a higher recurrence and re-interventional rate compared to the resection uh, treatment. But uh, you know, as uh, our disease for using fibers and the dermatosis, it were uh, after the menopause, the hormone it's a hormone related, so it will relief after the menopause. So we don't need to to resect or, or remove the whole tissue 
until we just we, we need to their symptom to be decreased and they can have a better life life so we can keep the uterus and also in my country china many chinese women they don't want to use uh, they don't want to remove their uterus they want to keep their uterus so that's a very good important reason for them to do this uh, uh ablation therapy and also compared to the uh, traditional laparoscopic surgery and the open surgery, it has much less trauma, much less pain. Usually can patient can be discharged on the same day or the second day after the treatment. So one thing I want to mention is that, uh, because uh, some uh, doctors may question, that if you don't get the pathology, you, you don't know if it's a malignancy. So right now, I'll let you, I'll let you know this MI is very important for us to make a different should a diagnosis before the treatment. Also, we need to, the, to know this uh, MI image if it is good for the ablation therapy. Because some, sometimes, if this T2 signal, we look at the, the T2 signal, if this one is black, and usually it's very easy to do with the ablation therapy. If it is turned to be white, uh, in the, it means that uh, many water inside the tumor, and it's relatively uh not too easy to be uh, treated with uh with a summer and also we need to check some uh special uh, uh series like a dwi series we need to rule out the malignancy uh, uh, this is a t2 high signal tumor and we need we need to if you want to treat this kind of the tumor with a uh, uh ablation therapy Usually, right now, our experience will give those kind of patients with uh, GNIH uh, analog uh, before treatment three for three to six months uh, to to decrease the blood vessels to the uh, fibers. And sometimes, if the patient want to have fertility, you need to wear uh, you need to aware of the energy will cause the damage to the endometrium. So the last patient, the third patient. She want to get uh, ablation therapy, but the family we, we don't do want don't want to do the ablation therapy for her because she has a fertility uh, desire. So we do the hysteroscopic resection. Uh, this is a sarcoma case. I will, I will just let you know that this uh, DWI signal. This one is a DWI signal, and uh, also this is ADC uh, value. This is a low, this is a very high. With these uh, two signals, it means something wrong with the, uh, with the tumor. So this patient, she came to me last year. She wanted me to do a um, mammectomy. Well, but when I look at her, the MI image, I thought that she's not a myoma case. So I finally, I do a vaginal hysterectomy for her. It turned to be a sarcoma. So uh, I just want to use this case to let you know there's some of the method we can do the differential diagnosis before the treatment. So especially for the myoma patient, MI is very important to know to if it is suitable for the ablation therapy. In most of the cases, uh, the myoma is, uh, is suitable for ablation therapy. Oh. So this is a method we right now we use for the biopsy. Uh, sometimes we also do the vaginal vaginal approach. So with the vaginal approach, you don't need to worry about these uh, uh, malignancy cells uh, spreading. Uh, but uh, in the past, we you generally just do the biopsy during or before the treat uh, the treatment. So we get a spacement uh, for the uh, pathology. Now I want to skip the the high one. So. Uh, I want to show the microwave. So principle of the microwave is just to work as the same as your microwave oven uh, in your home. Uh, this microwave uh, is an antenna. It has a tip and has an energy producing uh, antenna. And it also has a, a water cooling system. So it can bring down the temperature uh, around the, the body. So uh, with this uh, antenna, and we can insert this, uh, this is another device. Uh, this is uh, just a demonstration of the, how it works. With this uh, antenna, we insert into the tissue with accumulating, uh, accumulating of the time. And we can gradually see it turns to be white here. 
That means that this uh, zone is ablated. So with accumulating over the time, this zone will gradually enlarge. Enlarge. Uh, right now, with the microwave, we can do the uh, from abdominal wall, and we can also do the transcervically. We can do the through the usual cavity, and we also can do the laparoscopic uh, layout. Uh, so when you put the needle into the tissue, it will cause uh, uh, carbonization uh, of the, the, this area and also can have some uh, uh, ablation zone, uh, surrounding zone, and the normal tissue are, are around this. Uh, uh. Usually when we do the treatment, we, we have to move the tip of the needle uh, gradually uh, from low, uh, from the uh, far distance, and the you know, gradually to the to the prop, uh, the so you can gradually ablate the whole area. So this is uh, our traditional way to do the ablation with abdominal ultrasound guide. We put the abdominal ultrasound on the abdominal wall, and we can insert this uh, needle into the the myoma. And with the moving of the needle, we can uh, gradually ablate the whole uh, myoma. So uh, when we do the uh, fiber treatment, uh, usually we just do the some uh, symptomatic uh, fibers. Uh, if the the mama is uh, too small, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, locate the mama well. So usually the the smallest one have to be like the two centimeter. Uh, if the mama is greater like the ten centimeter, uh, it doesn't mean that it cannot be treated. It just uh, make you longer time and uh, risky uh, to do the treatment. So usually, if the myoma is greater than ten centimeter, I would prefer to use a GNIH uh, analog for three to six months to to sink the myoma, or sometimes uh, to uh, to make it easier to do the treatment. And uh, for those uh, fertility patients, usually uh, I don't do the treatment for the type two or type zero. Because you will, will burn the endometrial. So, usually for those patients with a type 3 to type 5 mama, we will treat them when we, the, the, the diameter is greater than the five, uh, 5 centimeters. So, this one is uh, it's, uh, super easy for it's compared to my mastectomy. It's very easy. You just uh, insert the needle uh, within like the 10 minutes, you can ablate them all, and we can. Uh, also, uh, just uh, let the patient get pregnancy one month after late, after treatment, uh, and uh, we also need to in our um, outpatient clinic we need to look at the the roots. If the roots is safety to do the treatment, right now we have the four roots, uh, so right now we can uh, have many uh, ways to do the ablation uh, treatment, especially you know as a uh, the adenomyosis. Usually, the ninety percent of the adenomyosis lesion was located in the posterior wall. So, if you do it vaginally, it's relatively easy to do the treatment. Uh, but with the vaginal approach, uh, we just need to wear out, uh, be aware that the if the lesion is too big, then the vaginal uh, the probe is a uh, very hard to to see clearly. So, if the lesion is uh, greater than uh, seven centimeter. Uh, you have to watch out the the needle. It's a uh, it's better to do the chance of down the ray. Now uh, we skip this one. Uh, usually we we'll put the patient in a lastotomy position, and so we can do the hysteroscopic exam before and after, especially for those patients with a fertility uh, design. So this is a water cooling system. So you can bring down the temperature of the needle. Uh, before the treatment, uh, sometimes we use, usually uh, we can uh, insert a needle into the abdominal cavity, and then we have uh, insert uh, the normal saline, like one liter to 1.5 liter into the abdominal cavity to create a, a situs uh, for the uh, treatment. So create a water around the uh, uterus to protect the bowel. So uh, uh, this is the ultrasound guide. 
But in the beginning, you need this ultrasound guide to help you to find the needle. Because in the, in the, in the beginning, it's very relatively hard for you to, to catch up the needle. So you need this kind of the guide to see, to see the needle. But if you get familiar with this uh, needle, and you don't, you don't need to use this guide always because you, this guide will restrict the uh, movement of the needle. Uh, so this is a fiber fiber education, fiber education. This is a one and a two. Um, and so uh, in the past, we do the enhanced ultrasound before the treatment. But right now, we skip this uh, step because we have the, the, the MI image before the treatment. Uh, so we skip this now. Uh, so usually, we treat the fibers uh, in the, 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 the below one first and uh, with accumulated time. And you adjust the needle, and we you can ablate it. This is uh, fibers gradually. When you finish this one, uh, and you move the your antenna to the second one. Uh, if you do high food before, then you will be very uh, happy to see this reaction because you know this is ablated. Because when you do the hypo, it takes longer time you can uh, to wait to see this reaction. So that's you you can understand why I I quit HIFU now. Although we have called HIFU is a non-invasive one, but right now with the microwave, uh, it's uh, much faster and uh, it works well. And so right now we don't use HIFU anymore with this uh, microwave. And then also this device, the device is uh, very cheap compared to HIFU. So that's why I can uh, afford by many of the machines in our different centers uh, in China. So after patient, we with this uh, enhanced ultrasound, we can check this uh, uh, RV, uh, we can inject the sonovi IV, so we can check this uh, ablated zone area. Uh, uh, so after the treatment, we can see this uh, dark area in the MI, this is mean ablated. Uh, this is a case for another case for adenomyosis. Uh, the principle is the same. So uh, without a guide, you can also do the treatment. So we can see this one, she had a posterior wall sickness, sickness. Uh, and uh, I asked my assistant to push the usuals upward. So it can help you to uh, insert the needle, insert the needle, okay? So you can see the tip of the needle. It's very important, you need, you need to be very familiar with ultrasound, and you also you need to have very good machine, otherwise you cannot see it very clearly. So, so this, this is a bit of the zone uh, inside the, the, the uh, uterus. So, Gradually, we can move this uh, this uh, needle. Gradually, ablate the whole posterior zone. So uh, this uh, is the image after the treatment. Uh, we can see this area uh, getting dark. That means this area. Uh, was ablated after uh, treatment on the IMI. We can see this is uh, the the way we treat with uh, we did the uh, percutaneously. Uh, so we usually keep some distance along uh, to the to the cellosa. So it's very important you cannot penetrate the cellosa, otherwise it will cause the damage to the bowel. Uh, so if the patient has the fertility requirement, usually we need to leave 5 to 10 centimeters away from the cellosa and away from the endometrium. So if the patient don't have the fertility requirement, we if do the percutaneously, 
uh, as chain as a domino ultrasound, we can ablate the mitral as well. But if we do the lab laparoscopically, we can achieve a higher ablation uh, zone. So for the diffuse adeno adenomyosis, it's more difficult to treat with a patient with a fertility requirement. We try this method, but still the pregnancy rate is still not too good. If the patient don't have the fertility requirement, we can ablate the whole area. Uh, some technique we can uh, protect the endometrium. Uh, one is uh, we use the water to irrigate during the treatment uh, to bring down the temperature. And also before and after the treatment, we always do the hysteroscopic exam to check the endometrium. Uh, for the uh, type two zero to type two myoma, we prefer to do the uh, hysteroscopic resection. Uh, so that's the way we can combine the uh, the endoscopic surgery with the ablation therapy. After the treatment, you can only see a very tiny little needle over here. Uh, uh, how about the, the result? So this is a, 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 a data we published in, uh, in, uh, from our Chinese uh, hospitals. Uh, after uh, half of uh, half years, you can see usually the reduction rate is about 80%. That's a general idea you can know. So this dark area will gradually shrink, but it needs some time to do the to get the volume uh, to shrink down. So usually the symptom getting uh, is, uh, getting improved. For adenomyosis uh, with the microwave treat treatment, usually this uh, we can ablate the endometrium as well. So after this kind of the diffuse uh, adenomyosis, patient get uh, pain relieved and the uh, symptom uh, getting better. Uh, so this is uh, my image we, we did for the diffuse adenomyosis. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, one case I want to present to you with you the, the, because this uh, case is uh, very promising for us. So she had a, a RF value uh, in many uh, of three, uh, like uh, five years ago. And uh, she also had an open surgery uh, in year 2018. And after the open surgery, she had a relapse of the uh, adenomyosis. Uh, when we treat uh, her adenomyosis, MI shows that the posterior adenomyosis lesion is about a, uh, seven centimeter. So uh, the patient was referred by our uh, uh, IVF uh, doctors. When we saw it, this uh, lesion was relapsed over here. So we did the treatment for her. After the treatment, we can see this uh, zone was ablated. And uh, after that, she, gave, uh, she was given four months of the GNIH uh, for, uh, before the IVF, before the embryo transfer. So finally, she gets the embryo uh, the pregnancy and she had a cesarean at 33 weeks. So this case uh, tells us that maybe microwave ablation is a is a good is a very good alternative alternative way uh, compared to the the uh, open surgery for adenomyoma, adenomyosis. So uh, the uh, second method is we can do the through the uterine cavity. So when we the Abdominal ultrasound guide, we can uh, adjust the needle, adjust the needle. So this is uh, abdominal ultrasound, uh, especially for those uh, posterior lesion, we can do it through this approach. Uh, so the, the third approach is we can do the transcervically. Transcervic uh, area is uh, is uh, very easy to to uh, to learn because you don't need to learn how to catch up the needle. Uh, but uh, it's uh, as I just told you that uh, it cannot uh, if the lesion is too big, then the vaginal ultrasound sometimes is very hard to see the larger uh, lesion. So you need to watch out for this, uh, this kind of the procedure. Uh, the last uh, method is so we can do the laparoscopic assisted microwave ablation. 
Uh, this one, we do this one. We don't do this one for the uh, uterine fibers. We only choose, choose this uh, lesion, uh, this method for the adenomyosis because we want to achieve a higher NPV rate. So that's the way we can do uh, the laparoscopic assistant uh, microwave ablation. So uh, usually for the fibers, abdominal ultrasound or, or vaginal uh, ultrasound approach is enough. Only for the, the uh, adenomyosis, we treat in this uh, method. So with this method, we can we can see we can uh, get in a higher uh, dark area and be ablated the air as well compared to the uh, transabdominal and to the uh, trans uh, cervical so, uh, method. So sometimes we can also combine the abdominal world approach and the vaginal approach together. So like this, the multiple fibers, we can ablate this this one with a abdominal approach, but this one this one is uh, relatively easier to to get through the vaginal approach. Uh, I also want to show a very interesting case. Uh, this patient she got a nine centimeter myoma. Uh, this is a type two myoma. Uh, she wanted to have the fertility desire, so we give her GNH uh, for three months, we get in, uh, in the shrink to six centimeter, but it's still too big for the uh, hysteroscopic resection. So we ablated some of this area here, and finally we did a, a, a hysteroscopic resection, so uh, make it possible to do a hysteroscopic resection for such a large uh, myoma. So right now we can combine those methods uh, so this one is the, her last surgery for the uh, for the for the myoma. So uh, I just want to show here some of the the myoma is getting very soft with this uh, method. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we can combine this uh, method with uh, hysteroscopic resection. So usually we resect the type zero to type two myoma fibers. Where we we can ablate this uh, type three to type seven myoma with ablation. And we also use uh, hysteroscopic to to do the endometrial uh, checkup. Uh, uh, we also use uh, microwave. We can do the endometrial ablation. This is uh, just a very easy way. Uh, we can do the uh, with uh, abdominal ultrasound uh, guide. And this is another method we do the to do the treatment for the cesarean scar endometriosis. It's also it's also very easy. Oh, let me let me just skip this. No, I cannot. Hmm. Oh, oh, so I don't want to see the whole video. I just want to show here. We can see this is a. Uh, the endometriosis on the abdominal scar. So with this needle, we're getting into the, this uh, lesion and we can ablate it with the whole uh, long. So after treatment, we can see there's only a tiny wall uh, here. Uh, regarding the complication, I think that the complication is very complicated. Uh, you need to watch out. But just as a laparoscopic surgery, it can cause the bleeding, it can cause infection, especially infection. Infection is a very common uh, complication with ablation because the, the tissue is getting the closest. It's very easy to be infected. It also can uh, cause uh, uh, surrounding organ injury, like a bowel, like uh, this is uh, caused by typhoon, uh, but it can be caused by microwave as well. As well. 
So if this patient want to get a pregnancy, so it's kind of a, the uterus, we got a uterine rupture. And also we very uh, uh, unique complication is the watery discharge after, after the, the ablation, especially when the ablated area uh, affected the endometrial, it will cause the uh, discharge, watery discharge after the treatment. Uh, this one, this one. This one is the case. We, I, we, she had multiple fibroids, and the uh, uterus is very big. She had a, a mammectomy before, but she refused, so still want to do keep her uterus. We ablated this area and caused the necrosis. So we resect this uh, with a uh, scope key resection and ablate other mass, uh, fibers. Finally, she get infected and. Uh, uh, two weeks later, we get uh, uh, infected, and we finally did that and then, uh, DNC, and she will recover the well afterward. I just want to let you know, when you combine with uh, hysteroscopic resection, with ablation, the infection rate is relatively very high. So with this uh, method, I think that uh, give us our gynecologist uh, a better choice for uterine fibroids and the edema. So, it's, so it can, uh, uh, it cannot combine with uh, laparoscopic surgery and uh, hysteroscopic surgery. Uh, right now, less and less, for me, less and less laparoscopic surgery, but the hysteroscopic surgery is, is about the same. But right now we can combine the microwave uh, with, uh, together with uh, uh, hysteroscopic resection. Uh, in Chinese, uh, all thing we call the, you need to uh, master eating weapons. So only you know this kind of weapons, you can do uh, treatment well. Uh, I want to skip this. Uh, uh, this is our uh, WhatsApp group. So if you want to uh, know more about the ablation therapy, uh, you can join us in our WhatsApp group. And uh, the last uh, thing I want to mention is that we are going to have a workshop uh, in India. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to how to pronounce the name of the city. Shash, how to pronounce this? Bhuvaneshwar. Bhuvaneshwar. Okay, we are going to have the workshop next month, early next month, on September 3rd in uh, Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, next month, next month. Hope you can join. Okay, thank you for attention. Let me finish. I finish my talk. Thank you, Shah. Okay. Hmm. That was uh, wonderful, especially the cases which you showed, and. Uh, you weighed with the advantages of uh, microwave and HIFU and radio frequency, compared them to surgery, and also shows us showed us interesting videos. Uh, <clears throat> also, you highlighted on complications. I will ask you about uh, that later on. But uh, I have uh, because I have also started doing microwave ablation, and so has Doctor Vimmi also started doing microwave ablations in India. I have a few practical questions about that, if you can answer. Mm. Uh, sure. <clears throat> first is uh, that what is the most crucial thing that we are looking at in ultrasonography when we are uh, right from the beginning? One is you said that needle tip should be always be visible while doing ultrasonography, uh, where the needle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how far do you advance the needle tip? And secondly, when you, of course, when the ablation starts, you see the echoes coming, echo bubbles coming up on the screen. But when to stop the procedure? Mm -hmm. It's probably one of mm -hmm. the most crucial things because you don't want to over ablate uh, to mm -hmm. avoid damage to endometrium and serosa. At the same time, you don't want to under ablate. Mm. Under treatment. Yeah. Uh, so, how yeah. do you? What What is the most crucial thing to monitor in ultrasonography? How do you decide when to end the procedure? Yeah. The The, the first question is how far you can uh, go through the 
uh, the Yuxin war. I, I just as I suggested, uh, if the the magma is too big, then I prefer to do with uh, denied analog treat, pre treatment for the myoma. If the lesion is too big, it makes a uh, longer time and also it makes dangerous because it can, uh, uh, if the ultrasound machine is, uh, the quality is not too good, then you probably you cannot see clearly with the needle. And also uh, it takes a longer time and it makes uh, easy to broken the needle. So I prefer to shrink the 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 mama uh, if the mama is a lesion greater than ten centimeter. But uh, the largest one I treated in uh, in Beijing is uh, about eighteen centimeter, and she is my classmate. And I used uh, about two hours to finish her. Originally, the mama size is twenty five centimeter. So I give her a GNIH analog. And it still was very big, so I have to treat her. So it does not mean that you cannot treat the the bigger myoma, but it takes longer time and more risky. So the second question is that when you look at the ablation, uh, you need to look at this white area. White area it means that it was ablated. So just uh, use this uh, high echo area to determine if it was ablated. So if you saw this white uh, echo goes to this uh, uh, surrounding tissue, that means that the energy reached there. So, uh, but anyway, we need, we need to use uh, the uh, the enhanced ultrasound to check if this uh, uh, the it's enough for the ablation. Okay. And secondly, uh, you mentioned about suspicious looking myomas should be treated surgically or, you know, maybe by hysterectomy or so. Uh, but uh, what about uh, the myomas which show degenerative changes like um, uh, cystic degeneration, um, calcific degeneration? Uh, what about those? Would you, would you still go ahead with microwave ablation in those? Uh, of mm. course, you do a biopsy, but uh, because sometimes uh, you see this peripheral calcification all around the myomas, mm. especially in uh, perimenopausal age group or if the myoma is old enough. And uh, mm. it could be very difficult to pass your needle or antenna through that calcific zone. Mm. Any mm. thoughts on that? Uh, I, I only... I only didn't treat the myoma with. Uh, I'll show some of the picture. Uh, I got some of the uh, diagnosis uh, treatment. Let me see uh, if I have uh, some of the uh, lesion that. Let me let me check the because uh, sometimes uh, uh, yeah, there is this patient. She actually, she want to, uh, she came to me. Can you see this uh, picture? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my image. This is my, she actually, she was pregnant. And after pregnancy, this mom was still there. If we just use the ultrasound, we cannot tell is this, uh, uh, my mom is, uh, is, uh, 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 is degenerated or not. But uh, actually, with this is uh, this is a uh, uh, T2 signal. We cannot tell any difference. This is a degenerated myoma, but with the enhanced uh, MI, we can see here another. Yeah, we can see here this myoma is uh, totally degenerated after pregnancy. This is a very common, interesting thing. As I uh, uh, just to let you know, if this myoma was uh, degenerated with uh, necrosis. I don't do treatment. Otherwise, uh, we check the DWI signal. And I will show you this uh, image, uh, we'll let you know this uh, image. And... Because right now, I al always get the MI for those, uh, for my patients, so a DWI signal. So with the DWI signal, I can, uh, I can see very clearly what's the problem with the patient. Uh, so we'll show you another you case. Mm. So you recommend MRI over ultrasound for preoperative evaluation? Yeah, yeah, MRI always. 
for Adinu meiosis, not always. Uh, but for the uh, myoma, I always uh, do the do the the, the uh, do the MI checker for them. Because MRI is better in diagnosing uh, the degenerative changes as well as it has a better chance of giving a clue for sarcomatous changes, right? Yeah, yeah. For the calcification, it's it's okay because you just see some high reaction. But for those kind of this, uh, like uh, this uh, patient with uh, sarcoma cases, you always need to check these... Uh, let me see. Let me show you this. this is a very typical image of his of a MI. Uh, this uh, well, the case. Uh, I, because in the audience can put their questions in the chat box. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, any other questions? So I can also in between I. I chat yeah, Dr. Vimi? Yeah. First of all, uh, thank you so much for the fantastic talk, uh, Shaming. So we have mm -hmm. a question for you that uh, how many percentage of your ablation patient landed up with a definitive surgical treatment later? Uh, about 10 to 15 percent. Around 10 to 15 percent. And in two years. In two years. That's the early data. This is early there. So uh, uh, can I show this image for you? This is uh, ADC value. So this patient, I just mentioned is this patient, this uh, ADC value is very low. And uh, we check her T2 signal. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, just uh, show you some higher if image, but uh, you need to watch this signal. DWS signal. DWS signal is very important to do the differential diagnosis with the sarcoma and the myoma. So this series must be included in the before the, the, the evaluation for the surgery. Okay. Okay. DWI is the differential weight imaging, right? Yeah. Diffusion weighted images. So I wanted to ask you, uh, initially you mentioned in your talk that uh, you were doing HIFU for all patients and then you shifted to microwave ablation. So what was the uh, main criteria when you shifted yourself completely from HIFU to microwave ablation? Uh, the main reason is, uh, is the speed, the ablation speed. As I just, you know, uh, the, like the 10 centimeter myoma, if I do the MI guide HIFU, and my guy, the focus ultrasound, it takes me about uh, four to six hours. Mm -hmm. With uh, uh, the ultrasound HIFU, it takes me about uh, two to three hours. And with the microwave, usually less than one hour. So yeah, that's you can understand. I also do radio frequency as well. Radio frequency, the efficiency is uh, low compared to microwave. So that's how I choose. Right now, 80% uh, of my cases are done with uh, microwave. So is there any advantage of uh, radio frequency over microwave? Yeah, the radio frequency, the, the needle can be very thin. So it can be like the 18G uh, or 19G. So for the thyroid cases, it can be a good choice because you don't want to leave any scar on the side on your neck. So that's the uh, advantage for the radio. The other uh, advantage for the radio frequency is that the uh, the uh, it has uh, impedance detection, so you can tell you when to stop. Impedance detection is there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The machine can tell you when to stop. Yeah, machine can tell you when to stop. Okay. But it works with a return electrode. What? The radio frequency. The radio frequency works with a return electrode on the patient, right? With return electrode? Uh, I didn't want to catch it up. Yeah, you have to apply a current pad on the on the on the thighs of the patient. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so that's right. So sometimes I will tell you that some uh, uh, patients has some uh, burn on her leg or on the button with the radio frequency. That doesn't happen with the microwave. Mm -hmm. But in microwave, your only indicator is what you see on ultrasonography for the yeah yeah issues. yeah. It's it's a uh, it's a relatively very, very easy to to tell where to to abate and where to uh, stop. And what is the mean time from ablation to uh, a significant reduction in volume on follow up? So when do uh, you recommend a repeat? Yeah, there was uh, just uh, gradually. It's a uh, doesn't doesn't mean that uh, you know, it will shrink to, to very soon. I will show you one of the picture here. Maybe uh, I show. Uh, Xiaomi, what is your follow up protocol? Yeah. Uh, I mean, how frequently do you do MRI or ultrasonography after the procedure? I usually I just uh, do the the MI once uh, one week. In one week after treatment, after that, I will just uh, use uh, ultrasound to check the, the patient. So uh, this, I have a patient I followed for for seven years. I will show this picture to you so you can know, understand how it should work. This is a this patient. She's actually she's a uh, she's a, she was treated with a. MI guide HIFU, but the principle is the same. But, uh, everything, uh, let me let me see where, where is the follow. So after a week, you do MRI for all cases. Hmm? After a week, but, you yeah, do, yeah, yeah. You do MRI. one week. So, but in my in my country, the MI is very cheap. So in my patient, I will always ask them to check the MI because MI is very clear compared to the ultrasound. Ultrasound is you sometimes it's uh, very difficult to uh, to see where the residual area. Can you see this picture here? Yes. So this picture is uh, is uh, seven years follow up uh, when we finished uh, with the MI guide IFU. So before, after, soon after, we can see there's some area was uh, was left here. We can see from the MI image is very clear. And uh, three months later, one year later, seven years later, so it will gradually shrink. But uh, usually with this uh, enhanced uh, MI, we can see this dark area, but with ultrasound, you cannot see it. So uh, I'll, I'll show you another photo that here uh, is uh, the treatment after the the after the ablation. So with the uh, ablation therapy, this is uh, after the microwave. Usually we can check the ablation zone and the residual zone. So this area is ablated, but this is a residual tumor. So it's uh, like the two millimeter here. It's uh, very easy to tell where is uh, is uh, the capture a uh, capture of the myoma. Okay, because MRI gives you a non-perfuse volume because this is a contrast enhanced MRI. So you can yeah. actually non-perfuse volume is that black area which actually tells you that there is no blood circulation here and that is the ablated zone. So that yeah. Graphically, and uh, you can quantitatively tell the result of the procedure. This hmm. can be done in ultrasound. Yeah, uh, ultrasound is very hard. It's very hard. Unless it's, you uh, contrast enhanced ultrasonography. Yeah, but uh, it's, you know, it's very hard to tell where is the boundary of the ablation zone, where is the capsule. So it's uh, the image is not too good. Uh, so, because in the past, in the past, when we do the MI guide HIFU, where every patient will calculate the MPV rate to non-perfusion volume group, the, compared to the whole size of the myoma. So we can calculate this uh, uh, this uh, ratio. Oh. 
So for both pre-operative and post-operative, your preferred modality is uh, MRI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that uh, it, it may be not be practical for you in your country, but but in my country, MI is uh, very easy to access and uh, very easy to to uh, to get to the check. Usually, patient can get to the MI in the same day, uh, so it's very easy here in China. But I think most operative MRI makes uh, doing that at least that makes more sense because it gives you the quantification of your uh, uh, your procedure, the success of your procedure. Yeah, especially you know with those uh, T two signal, high T two signal. Mm -hmm. If you want to treat this patient with uh, ablation, mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning we tried to with uh, treat it with a uh, high flow, and uh, MI guide high flow. It's a uh, reaction is very very difficult. So with the microwave, we still give the have the same general idea. After before the treatment, you need to give them GnIH analog, and to wait for three to six months. And when the blood vessel decreased, and the reaction to the energy is getting better. Okay, and uh, in amongst the vascular fibroids and less vascular fibroids. Which one mm -hmm. is better or easier to treat with ablation? Good vascularity is better to ablate or faster to ablate or low vascularity is? No, actually, I don't check this one with a microwave. Uh, in the high full time, we check the, uh, the vascularity of the fibers. Usually, you have, if the blood vessel is very big, very much, it is very too much blood vessel. That means that it's very uh, hard to treat with energy, with high flow. Yeah, because I read in one of the studies, the, of course the sample size was not very big, but their findings were that high vascular lesions will shrink more after microwave ablation compared to low vascular, low vascularity. Maybe, yeah, uh, but uh, from the energy point of view, the energy is very harder. Uh, it's not easy to, to do the treatment with uh, high uh, vascularity of the yeah. myeloma. Yeah. yeah, because the uh, heat sink effect uh, will be more with high vascularity. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions, uh, Xiaoming, is what is the complication rate after microwave ablation? Uh, I think uh, well, the person wants to know about major complication rather than the... major complication is rare, rare. For the like a bowel injury, I uh, for those uh, seven years, I just have one bowel injury. That happens in the adenomyosis patient with the laparoscopic surveillance. That's uh, you know. Yeah, okay. so the uterus is too big. The uterus is too big. I cannot see the tip of the needle. So wow. with the ultrasound guide, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Only if you have a very good ultrasound machine, you have the experience with the ultrasound image, and you do it carefully. You, if right. you cannot see the tip of the needle, you mm -hmm. don't do a blade chain. If you only you see the needle, you mm -hmm. start to do a blade. Right, right. But I'm still doing laparoscopy also for all my cases, along with USG, because uh, no. at least uh, it takes all the important organs away. It's uh, I, I, I know it, I know uh, that's a uh... mental comfort, but uh, uh, that is uh, working. How about you, Doctor Vimi? You are doing uh, purely ultrasound guided, or you put in a laparoscope? No, uh, I put a laparoscope. Yeah, I, I see that. Biased towards the... laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I I think that uh, like the uh, if I didn't start with HIFU, I started with microwave directly, then uh, you you have a long learning curve, long learning curve for the ultrasound. But uh, I do HIFU for so many years, so I'm familiar with uh, the ultrasound, so I can do the with. Uh, but you know, compared to the laparoscopic and the with the uh, uh, the ultrasound guide. Yeah. The trauma is uh, is very different. It's very different. So that's why I think that I prefer to do the ultrasound guide, especially vaginal ultrasound guide. Patient like it because uh, no abdominal wall, uh, abdominal wound, and uh, no scar on the abdominal wall. Uh, so they like it. So unless, unless for the for the adenomyosis patient. 
for uh, isolated adenomyosis, I still agree percutaneous is okay, but there are patients who have associated endometriosis and adenomyosis where they may get benefit with microwave ablation. Here, the laparoscopy has an additional role for endometriosis excision as well. I know, but uh, uh, Shuyashi, you know what I did for the endometrioma, right? You saw my procedure for the endometrioma in, in Shanghai Center. We do the school therapy for endometrioma. Uh, so that's the one of the choice we did for the endometrioma. I think you are very good and confident in uh, interventional ultrasonography as, uh, as well as laparoscopy. I think we are still a bit more biased towards laparoscopy and excisional surgery. Uh, mm. like Dr. Vimi said, for those extrinsic adenomyosis, which are basically endometriosis invading the uterus and causing adenomyosis, uh, we put in a laparoscope and excise the endometriotic lesions while we ablate the adenomyosis. Mm. I think that uh, in the beginning, it's very important to have no less than no complication. Otherwise, you lose your confidence. Yes, yes. So about these complications, uh, what is the what are the crucial tips to avoid complications? What is to be done during the procedure so that we avoid major complications? I think that uh, uh, the most important is the image. Image. If you cannot see a tip of needle. You know, sometimes you 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 put the needle in. Sometimes you see part of the needle. That's not correct. Mm -hmm. You should make make sure you see the tip. Make sure you show you show the tip. So sometimes you sh you shrink the, the the needle, and to make sure where's the tip is. If you cannot see it, don't do it. Don't do it until you make sure the tip where's the tip. And sometimes and also. Uh, you need to some uh, like the uh, 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 abdominal cavity. You insert the normal ceiling to protect the bowel. Right. So that's my personal experience for the endometrial uh, for the endometrial protection. So if the patient has the uh, fertility desire, I prefer to insert a, a catheter, a foreign catheter, foreign uh, catheter into the uterine cavity. Uh, one thing is I want to uh, check the where is the uterine cavity, where is the mitral is. The other thing is I want to use the uh, irrigation water to bring down the 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 uh, the the temperature. Right. Yeah, I also do the same thing with the chromoperturbation uh, manipulator. I mm -hmm. continuous irrigation of the endometrium so the cavity is visible well. And yes, as you said, yeah. the temperature comes down. I think this is an additional uh, tool which we can offer our patients. I think Suyash and I have been trying to do that. Uh, what is your experience, Suyash, for this? Uh, what is the patient acceptance rate and what, what is your follow-up and how it works for your in your clinical practice? Yeah, so my clinical practice has got a lot of fertility patients and I have still not used in fertility patients. And uh, so there is there is very this uh, small subset of patients who do not want fertility and also want to preserve the uterus. So for them, this is a very good option. And uh, I am very much convinced for adenomyosis because uh, I think, as we all know, that the adenomyosis surgery which we do is kind of an obligation or as a last resort, we do that surgery. And uh, the results are variable with different surgeons and different patients. So I think it fills that gap between medical management and surgical management of adenomyosis. Absolutely. For fibroids, I have been very selective in the cases with the size and with the, and of course, patients desire for not wanting a major surgical procedure. So uh, I think the real essence of microwave ablation is that when we talk about laparoscopy, it is a minimally invasive surgery for the abdomen of the patient. But when we do mimectomy, whether it is open or whether it is laparoscopic, it is same for the uterus, right? But 
uh, hyphu or microwave ablation is micro invasive for uterus also. So probably in future when we have more evidence for fertility patients, this will these patients might have a better obstetric uh, safety and uh, better obstetric outcome in terms of uterine rupture. Of course, that needs to be studied well because right now there are only anecdotal cases like Xiaoming showed that after microwave ablation, patients uh, undergo shrinkage and can have natural pregnancy and delivery. Yeah. My One of my patients have also uh, of fibroid. I did microwave ablation for a 6 centimeter fibroid. Patient had said that she does not want any fertility in future. Uh, but uh, she, after the microwave ablation, once the tumor reduced by 70% in six months of time, I told her, I showed her the sonography report that it is well good under control and, uh, you know, the fibroid is now reduced in size. She went ahead and became pregnant. And uh, then I followed up very carefully and she delivered vaginally, not even by cesarean section. So, but this is an anecdotal case. But if we have more evidence of such cases, then probably even for fertility patients, this will be a worthwhile procedure. What about you? Uh, same as you said, uh, still I haven't started using for patients who are desirous of fertility, but for fibroids and adenomyosis where they want to preserve the uterus and they don't want a very invasive surgery, definitely I'm offering them and I've started using it with very good results. And uh, as Shaming already mentioned that the results will not be immediate. It is a slow process and we have to be patient. We have to counsel the patient very well. So we have seen uh, a significant reduction at six to nine months, not before that. Right. So we are not doing still MRI after one week, as Shaming said, because yes, it is expensive to afford in India, every patient doing MRI at one week. So we are doing directly, if they don't have any significant symptoms or something, we are doing imaging after three months and six months. Do you do, you do the uh, intense ultrasound after the treatment? Uh, yes, basic ultrasound we do but uh, no MRI. No, I mean the enhanced ultrasound. <laughs> enhanced ultrasound. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, one of the, uh, you need to check the uh, inter integrity of the uterus. Yes, that we do. Yeah. That yeah. We do. So, uh, just one question, Xiaomi. For this contrast enhanced ultrasonography, because many centers oh, may not have the equipped machine for the contrast enhanced sonography, uh, can they do rely on USG color? No, no, it's different. It's different. For the vascularity of the uterus. Uh, it's different. No, I know it's different, but can they rely on the Doppler findings to ensure the vascularity of the uterus surrounding the ablation zone? No. You can tell me. Maybe you can tell me the result. <laughs> I rely on this uh, kind of the Enhancing enhanced ultrasound, especially, especially the uh the MI image. MI is image for me. I think that's very precise, and uh, especially for those patients have the fertility. With the endometrial, you can check with a hysteroscopic exam, but if with the serosa, you cannot check with a hysteroscopic uh, exam. You can uh, maybe you can do the laparoscopically. You can know the the uh the zone the the serosa uh, was affected or not uh, I, 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 yeah i, I always uh, would rely on the mi image okay i think it's a fantastic technique and we should offer our patients as a non invasive option uh, and uh, i think many other centers have also started using it Yeah, I think there is one question uh, from uh, Gadpat Savan, sir, that what about the shrinkage? Is it permanent? What about the recurrence? I think, Xiaoming, you have the vast experience to talk about recurrence after microwave ablation. Yeah, just uh, uh, like this image I show you here, uh, you cannot see it. Uh, maybe I uh, restart again, uh, share again. So this image is very good image for you to look at the, what happened. This this one, this dark area is permanent. It's necrotic. 
so we, we were, were the volume will decrease uh, gradually. But for this patient, she is like the, the treatment, she is a 46. So the residual area, like here, this one, should go getting bigger and bigger. So that's the difference. So usually what I tell my patient is that after usually after treatment, the dark area is getting smaller. But this uh, residual area will get getting bigger later on. So do you uh, also repeat, uh, do, do you do repeat sittings as well, if required? Uh, this is the second part of the question from Dr. Ganpat. Uh, yes, I can do it for my patient. But uh, actually, you know, it's uh, in China, it's uh, still uh, an uh, expensive uh, treatment. Uh, in my country, it will cost uh, like 30,000 RMB to do the treatment. Like it's about uh, for uh, six uh, or to seven thousand US dollars, so it's a uh, still a very expensive way. Uh, if the patient has a relapse of need a second treatment, I can do a second treatment, but I will always uh, give her another option. Uh, would you like to do a hysterectomy or do do a mammectomy? Would you like? Would you like? I will tell you the the advantage and the disadvantage of the, this treatment. We can do them all. So it can be repeated as well. So uh, I think uh, you are also doing a work workshop at Bhubaneswar uh, with Suresh and Dr. G.S. Mahapatra. So if uh, any one of you is interested, can attend in person and see you doing these procedures live as well. And uh, on behalf of EFI and EEL and Pure Meditech Solution, I would like to thank all of you. Special thanks to Shoming for sparing time and sharing his experience over the years for this technique. And it was a wonderful uh, talk and wonderful discussion. If you have any questions, you can send to us. We will be posting this video on EFI YouTube as well. You can ask your questions there as well. We'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Join us in Bhubaneswar on 3rd September. It's a full one-day workshop with live procedures and lectures and a demonstration. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.